Welcome to our inaugural edition of Artist Spotlight, the podcast, brought to you by the Maryland Photography Alliance. I'm your host, Mitch Stringer, and we look forward to twice a month publishing podcasts with informative and provocative interviews with photographers from all over the United States and all over the world. So with this being our inaugural edition, maybe some important background information would be helpful. First, starting with the Maryland Photography Alliance. So the MPA is a nonprofit organization that provides its members with a wealth of educational opportunities. Whether you are or not a member of the MPA, or if you live outside of Maryland, you can still participate in MPA activities such as webinars, seminars, podcasts, many different contests, gallery shows, workshops, and so much more. So for information on the Maryland Photography Alliance, visit the MPA website at mdphotoalliance.org. So there you have info on our sponsor and really some great information available to you online. So I am Mitch Stringer, professional sports and wildlife photographer based in Maryland, and a lot of my time is spent traveling around the world photographing wildlife and cultures. Uh, When I'm in the United States, I do a tremendous amount of professional sports photography. That's everything from Major League Baseball to NFL football uh, and just every other kind of sport you can imagine. So uh, as host of the Artist Spotlight, I'm going to be talking with really, really interesting folks. And this first edition of the program is very, very special as I'm spending time interviewing my dear friend, wildlife and cultural photographer, truly a legend uh, in photography, Art Wolf. And Art has been photographing worldwide for well over 50 years, although he wouldn't, uh, he certainly doesn't look it to, uh, to meet him. He is as uh, excitable, as just full of energy as I'm sure he was 30 years ago. Many of you may be aware uh, of Art, not only from his over 100 books, but his long-running television series entitled Travels to the Edge, which is still available on a number of the uh, streaming services and YouTube, and it really is a must-see if you enjoy travel and wildlife photography. So to give you some background on the genesis of this interview, uh, several months ago, Art had approached me about going with him to Bangladesh, where he was collecting imagery for an upcoming book on uh, faith of the world. So various religious faiths and how they uh, go about uh, following their faith. And there is a uh, a week-long Muslim gathering that takes place uh, in Bangladesh. And so Art invited me to go, and I almost said yes before he even told me where we were going. And I'm I'm glad I did. It was just an incredible time. And uh, where we got together was in Dhaka, Bangladesh, which is the capital of Bangladesh. And this interview is at the airport as we are getting ready to depart to head home after two weeks crisscrossing the country. Just an incredible, incredible time there. Bangladesh is uh, the most overcrowded country in the world, which makes for quite an experience on a human level, but a tremendous photography experience. Not without its challenges, but just really, really unique. It really is a... uh, photographically speaking, a very, very special place to visit. They do not get a lot of tourists, so Art and I posed for no less than several hundred selfies with various locals of various ages. It was really, really something unique. And so I hope you enjoy this sit-down chat with myself and Art Wolf. Today, a very special episode as we are in Bangladesh's International Airport. Art and I have just completed 10 days crisscrossing Bangladesh, which is unique in many regards and very unique because this is, in fact, one of the countries that Art has not visited through his storied career. So uh, let me start off by asking you, Art, um, expectations coming in versus what we saw over the past week and a half um, what, what surprised you? Actually, everywhere I go, I always have a set of images in my mind. And, of course, I didn't have a lot to go with because there's not that many photos out there of Bangladesh. But I was here because I'm working on a book called Act of Faith that would be published in 
2025. And I knew that there would be many, many Muslims, millions of Muslims coming to and congregating around the capital, Dhaka. So I thought, in my mind, there would be sheer numbers of people. What I got was far more. It exceeded my expectations, but not just of masses of Muslims, but also the country. The workers carrying um, uh, bowls of coal on their head. It's like a throwback to a different era, and that was probably my biggest surprise. Now, we knew before the trip that with the annual Muslim Congress, you have literally millions and millions of Muslims coming from neighboring towns, congregating in Dhaka, and many of them uh, come and go through the train station here. And some people have seen images of uh, hundreds of thousands and millions hanging off of trains, etc. That environment is hectic to say the least, can be confusing to say the least. So from the standpoint of your experience with that and advice maybe for others who've been in environments where there's almost so many subjects it's hard to even focus, um, what, what are your thoughts on that whole uh, location? My thoughts are capture the chaos of the moment. There's few places on earth that you would have that many people with one purpose, which is to climb aboard these trains and occupy every potential spot where a person could be. And there were a lot of places where people were so crammed on the sides, the top, you literally could not see the train itself. There's no country that I can imagine that would permit that in the modern age. But here in Bangladesh, yeah. And that is part of the allure of going to a place where regulations are off the map. Because with this number of people, things like regulating people getting on a train would be unmanageable. And so the chaos of the moment is really what I was after. And anybody that thinks that they want to come here should expect also that the population is not that overexposed to... Anglo-Saxons, for instance, and so during the course of a six-hour period, I was pulled away by not less than 300 young men that want to have a selfie with me and or any other people that looked different than themselves. And so you, to be an emissary, to be, you know, standing up for America as a traveler, you accommodate that with a smile but it does take a lot of patience and a lot of time to allow everybody to get their picture with you. You know, for someone who is either in a cultural environment like this where cultures are really the focus of the photography or somebody who is joining you on one of your workshops around the world for a cultural uh, type workshop, I say that as opposed to wildlife, there may be a tendency for a bucket list kind of location to want to bring every lens uh, and the kitchen sink. But for those folks, what would you say are really the focal lengths that you want to have so that you're not bringing a 50-pound bag of lenses and juggling when you get out in the field? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And my response is bring wide angles because the sheer mass of humanity you can't really capture with a telephoto lens. You can do vignettes, and I did that, but I brought a 70 to 200 rather than a 1 to 500. The 200 range was good for pulling out details from the masses, expressions, moments where people are praying and all, all of that. But I think the smaller lenses really uh, win the day, and so that's what I would recommend. And the fact that I had two cameras around my neck with two different lenses because the dust uh, and the dirt is so airborne that if you were to change lenses during the course of it, you would just fill up your sensor with a lot of spots. So uh, I rarely walk around with two cameras around my neck. In fact, I can't even remember a time or recall a time when I've done that. But here, it made perfect sense. 
You know, you and I spent a few hours walking around a shipyard where many, many workers were repairing ships. They were cutting out bad sections that had rusted. They were painting sections. And, you know, your time was spent not only photographing groups of people and some portraits of people working, but also looking at the really almost macro photography, the, the unique uh, markings on walls and paint splatters and scratches, etc. And, you know, one thing I've learned from you is an environment that appears to offer certain photographic subjects offers many times more, if you are aware, and you take the time to look more closely. Maybe kind of talk about how you look around a, a big scene like that and identify images. Well, over the course of my career, I've expanded my range of subjects and vision. And so an environment like this is perfect for me because I've photographed the prayer and the religion, the mass of workers, but also the things that people would pass up, which is the degraded environment. And honestly, Bangladesh is an emerging country. And they have a lot of clutter, a lot of garbage, a lot of scratches on bu buses. Look like they're a pop can that's been stepped on multitude of times. So everywhere you look, there's these inadvertent, unplanned moments of scratches that, in a different light, could be a, a new Jackson Pollock painting. And that's, in fact, my background is art education and fine art painting. And so I'm seeing things that look like a William de Kooning a Mark Rothko or a Jackson Pollock in the chaos and the detritus and it's such a when everything else isn't existing when nobody's praying or the workers aren't working you can fall back on just photographing the walls the sides of buses just everywhere you look there's a photo and I'm looking up down around I'm not locking myself into one lens over another and so virtually you can go out on any given day and come away with a treasure trove of different images. And, and I'll, I'll close with this question. You know, the, the, the travel to Bangladesh, um, I think you could file under the, the road less traveled. Clearly, with the number of selfies that you mentioned, you were asked to, to join in and, and myself as well. Um, we are not um, familiar to the population here at this point. And so it takes a little bit of adjustment coming here. The creature comforts of home are not necessarily here. So what advice would you give to travelers who want to go beyond sort of the normal top 10 destinations and really explore unique places, unique opportunities to try to have a mindset that allows them to explore, maybe be a little uncomfortable and understand that cultures are different and walk away with some really unique treasured images? Yeah, I think that the very reason that it's not for everybody is the very reason you can come up with unique and different photos that are not overpopulated on the internet. You know, if it was a modern country, and I'll, I'll cite China. I started going to China in 1984 and then again in 1986, but then also in the 2000s, and it changed dramatically. Back in 84, it was a sea of bicycles and an odd car. Now, if you were to go to Beijing or um, Shanghai, it would look no different than any modern city on Earth. And I regret that simply because it was the charm of old China that I was really there to photograph. Now, Bangladesh is that China in 1984. It's not slick. It's not modern. There are some big buildings here and modern skyscrapers, but by and large, it's a throwback to a different era. And that's what motivates me to travel there. So if any kind of recommendations to people is go there with that expectations, but also know you're going to get something different and unique. And that's why you put up with you know, marginal food or less than stellar conditions. But you're only here for a week or 10 days or 14 days, and you can persevere knowing when you're on your way home, as I am now, I'm happy and pleased with what I got. Well, I hope you enjoyed my chat with Art Wolf from the Bangladesh airport there. We definitely covered a lot in a pretty short period of time, but you know, from that conversation, you can tell what an experience it was. For those of you who'd like to find out what art has going on in terms of upcoming workshops and book projects, 
Check him out at artwolf.com. And for all things new and exciting with the Maryland Photography Alliance, go to mdphotoalliance.org. And as for me, if you'd like to see what I have going on day to day, the quickest way to do that is on Instagram at Mitch Stringer Images. You can also check out the website at MitchStringerImages.com. We look forward to having you back twice a month as we publish Artist Spotlight, the podcast, and we hope you'll join us next time. Until then, wishing you good light and great shooting. We'll see you next time.